Hi everyone, this is Jaren from the Imaging Resource, and in this video we're going to take a look at the latest Lightroom feature to be added to the platform. This is actually the only a slider or like major feature that has been added to Lightroom since Dehaze, which was several years ago. So it's kind of cool to see a brand new feature be added. And when asked why they don't add more, uh, Adobe said it's because they have a really strict process for making sure what they do adds value. So they spend a lot of their time making sure that their product is really good. So before I show you guys what texture does, I do want to mention what it is supposed to do. So there's apparently high and low frequencies associated with imagery. So like a high frequency part of an image would be like sand, while like low frequency would be uh, just like blue sky. Texture is designed to enhance or uh, makes like, I guess make sharper or make less sharp uh, the features in that middle zone. It's just easier to show you. Um, this is actually, we'll start here, and what I'm going to do is show you what texture does as a global adjustment in a couple images, and then I'll also show you how it can be useful in targeted adjustments. So the texture you'll, you can see is going to be here under the presence area above clarity and dehaze, and if we go in and on this image and just kind of bring it up a little bit, you can see what it does. And I think that's about the most I would give this image. I actually think it should come down a little bit more, like because I don't want this area under his eyes to get kind of crazy. But watch his hair. Let me just kind of go up and down so you can see the difference of what this does. And they did mention that it's not supposed to delete like poor details. And you can kind of see that it's not totally getting rid of the pores. It's like smoothing the areas around it. And in this case, I don't know that you're ever going to want to be at negative 100. This is an extreme example. But you can see that it is relatively targeted to a certain area. I, in this image, God, I think that looks pretty good. And I honestly think that looks better than the original. The original now looks really like unsharp to me. So this is what that does here. Let's take a look at something like uh, animals. So feathers, feathers and fur. Um, you can see that the I, I, in this one it's less obvious than it'll be in this one, but let's let's do this one first. Um, we're gonna go pull the texture up, and you can see what it does to the feathers there, and it kind of makes it. It it looks like a mixture of sharpness and clarity. If I had to pick something, and so I in these images I think it's like every, it's the sweet spot seems to be so far in like the 40s, the 30s to 50s somewhere in there. And it looks kind of, it looks good. It, it definitely makes it look sharper without looking over enhanced. Um, we'll go onto the flamingo here that we have, and you can see what it does to the feathers as well. Like, what the, I, I think Texture's weak point so far is trying to make things smoother. Um, it, it still looks kind of plasticky and unnatural for the most part, but it does a really good job when you try and do like just a light bit of texture sharpening. It just makes the the edges and these feathers and in his hair just makes it look in his facial facial hair here it makes it just pop a little bit better and I and I really like that. Uh, so let's do a targeted adjustment. So in this case, I'll show you what I did here. You can see I selected just her hair because I wanted to see how this would look affecting something that would look nicer with more texture. So let's go ahead and add some texture to that. And I think that that does a really good job of even adding depth to areas that didn't have any before. Like you can kind of look up here where it doesn't really have a lot going on until we add it. See, that looks nice. I think it better matches the overall sharpness of her face when we do it that way. And so let's do another image. So let's say, let's go for this one. This is another one where I did some targeted adjustments. And in this case, I only targeted the water and I wanted to do the opposite effect. See what would happen if we wanted to try and make the water smoother. So in these long exposure images, you generally get pretty smooth water to begin with, but you can see that there's places where it wasn't quite as smooth as it was here. So like, here's an example of what would happen if we smoothed it. And now I, I think if I'm gonna make this particular image work, I gotta be a little bit more careful about my targeted adjustments because there's some of these areas that aren't, definitely needs to be a little bit more fine-tuned. 
Um, but you can see the difference in what it's doing here when I move the slider around. Okay, so on this image, I'm going to do another global adjustment, and I want you to focus just on like these rocky points and just the area that's not water. Um, let's watch that and see what happens. You can see that for the most part, it does a pretty good job not affecting the areas that it shouldn't affect. Now, th this will definitely be improved if you come in and make your own targeted adjustments and tell it that you want to make sure to get this area and this area and just the water here. Um, but just looking at the technology, it does a pretty good job understanding that we want to smooth the water and this motion and not these rocks, which I found to be pretty surprising. I expected it to treat everything pretty much the same. Now it is adding like a slight smoothing to it, but it's significantly less than what it's doing to the water around it, which is kind of cool. Uh, in this last image, well, second to last image, in this image, I want to show uh, another targeted adjustment. Let me grab the brush and I'll show you what I did. So I decided that I wanted to make the center of this image was going to be the focus and then the outside I wanted to further blur. So in order to do that, I would just come down and do this and I think like right there would be better. So this area is suddenly less of a focus than the middle area, which is still sharp. You can kind of see what would happen if I made the whole outside just as sharp instead. And it can kind of, it looks pretty unnatural, especially since this area, which is out of focus, is now finding ways to get sharper. Um, but I think this like looks pretty good, actually, if you wanted to do that. All right, in this final image, this is where we're going to talk about skin smoothing. Um, and I still think this is where there's work to be done. Uh, I went in here and I masked very roughly just her face to see what would happen if we changed the texture on it. And let me grab this and I'll show you what it does. So Adobe says it's supposed to not make things look plasticky. It's supposed to help alleviate that which you can get from a lot of these other softwares. And of course, I have it at negative 100. Let's like say like the negative 30 area. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you, it does preserve poor details better, but I still think that you're going to want to get like professional retouching skills to really make skin look the best. Uh, this is not ideal for working with skin, in my opinion. It just it, it just doesn't look real. Um, so there's there's advantages and disadvantages to this, to this tool. Uh, it's not clearly not perfect, but there are some things that it does really well. Like I really liked how it enhanced the hair in this image, and I really like how it enhanced feathers in this image and this image. So in, in, in many cases, it does have some really cool effects. Actually, in this last image, I'm going to go ahead and close this so I can show you. One of the things I want to focus on is take a look at the background of this one, and you can see how it isn't affecting the background nearly as much as the foreground and this is not a targeted adjustment this is just the software and the the tech knowing that it's supposed to focus on this area and not that uh, you can see it is doing some something minor to the background but it's it's clearly less of a, of a strength than the foreground so whatever they did to pr to make sure that textures in that are important are the focus and not stuff out of focus uh, they did a pretty good job with that so that's really it. That's all I have to say about the texture slider. It does have some advantages. I think there are places where it's going to make your images look a lot better. Uh, I just wouldn't lean on it so heavily as to be a, a skin smoother that uh, you maybe were hoping for. But uh, anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And for more on this, make sure you head on over to imagingresource.com.